and gentlemen, here we go in the second half. Now, just so you know, in case there was any doubt about the fact that this was part of Blitquick or not, Jerry's going to prove it to history. Yeah, okay, this is, if you're going to talk about side, it's called post-post-modern deconstruction. That's povo decon. Can everyone say that? Po Mo no. Po Mo Decon. One, two, three. Po Mo Decon. Okay, now Joseph Boys, over here, boy, over here, boy. He put out Motor Booty magazine. He knows the Motor City uh, 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 Motor City Cleanup right here. Okay. That's where Dan So is here it right is. Right? Joseph Boys says make the secrets productive. Why would we want to make the secrets productive? Okay, Craig, any idea? Revolution. Revolution, okay. Julian Assange. And so this is about putting you to sleep. Joseph Boys wanted to transform society with art. He said, make the secrets productive. Okay, so that's why Edgar Allan Poe invented the detective, detective novel. novel, which is reasoning backwards. And that's called effects precede causes. So that's why Surratt created pointillism with a paintbrush, but many years later, James Wickstead invented pixel, pixel vision with the pixel camera, which is electronic pointillism. So he prepared us and our whole sensibility of the mosaic by we're looking at paintings and preparing ourselves to look at television. So that's from pointillism to electronic pointillism. Just like, why did we create, you know, women wanted to go outside the city to get away from the urban, so they created these little paths and rode their bicycles outside to see the countryside. What did the paths eventually come? But the roads for cars. That is called effects precede causes. That's what Poe invented, and he spawned the symbolists, which eventually spawned the beats and what the symbolists were actually teaching. This is all Lithquake shit well, in a moving image venue. Required. And check this out. What the symbolists were saying was, it doesn't matter what the word means, it's how it sounds. So that's feeling. That's why Obama hired George Lakoff to teach him that forget issues, dudes. Go for feelings, you know, something like hope. And then Obama fired Lakoff because he know he knew the feeling issue would get people behind him. That's what the symbolists knew. They spawned the beats and they spawned Patty Smith and Jim Morrison and Bob Dylan, big whoopee. So we all jerk off to these people we think they're poetic. <laughs> and so then here's the punchline, what did they spawn? But advertising. And we all want to hate advertising, but Marshall McLuhan in 1951 put out his first book from Duchamp, The Mechanical Bride, saying that if you don't study your inventions, you'll become slave to them. He said, study advertising. Advertising works. So why don't we use their techniques to educate people? So then advertising came directly out of the symbolists and James Joyce. And then we got back to poetry, outing your inner dialogue, Lou Welch, the great beat poet right here in San Francisco, who went out in the woods next to Gary Schneider's house and killed himself. But what did he work for before he did poetry? Ad agency. What did he create? Ray kills bugs dead. That was Lou Welch? Pretty good poem, huh? Oh my God. Ray kills no bugs dead. Kill That's haiku. And for all you people who bitch because you're old school and you go, I hate that everybody goes around like this all day and they communicate with 140 characters only. No, how many characters is it? 26. 
140 characters only. You're limited in tweets. That's because when the ever invented tweets was saying, I want everybody to be a haiku poet. So he said, now you got to go around and just deal with 140 characters. So basically what Marshall says is, we shape our tools, then they shape us. And the big question is, after they shape us, there's all these hidden effects. We're not aware that cars enhance and intensify private mobility. We're all alone in our private metal. But the key to McLuhan was, why do we ignore the hidden effects of the things we invent? So we'll just walk around, Danny Plotnick, professional cameraman, and really good experimental filmmaker, and a moda booty kind of guy when it comes to magazine publishing, like printed matter, ooh, 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 I need printed matter. Okay, we're gonna go around the room and ask, why do we ignore the hidden effects of the things we invent? We'll start out with you, sir. We ignore the hidden why do, just off the top of your head, you're not trying to be witty or smart, you're not trying to think, you know, Captain Beefheart said, I've because had too much to think. We're under a mountain of pillows. We're under a mountain of pillows. What's the question? Why <laughs> do we ignore the hidden effects of the things we invent? For example, the hidden effect of cars is it enhances and intensifies private mobility. Eric, why do we ignore the hidden effects of the things we invent? Because they're way too scary to think about. Thank you. Val. Um, how can we ignore something that's hidden? How can we ignore something that's hidden? She answered with a question. You won. You're going to share that car with Morgan, and that car is going to be full. Sylvia, why do we ignore the hidden effects of the things we invent? Because we don't want to see the monstrosity of ourselves. We don't want to see the monstrosity of ourselves. That's the mirror. Okay, sir. Dale. Huh? Dale. Dale, tell us. Dale, why do we ignore the hidden effects of the things we invent? Uh, so we could keep on inventing without worrying about the so that we can keep on inventing. Well, that's Andy Warhol. He said, don't worry about what people think of your art. That's their job. Just keep making your art. Okay, Will, why do we ignore Because uh, nobody has told us what they are yet. Whoa! Nobody <laughs> told us what they are. Morgan. The what? Denial and subconscious are very powerful. <laughs> Speechless, that's a good way to be. Go ahead, Walter. Uh, they want to hunt us down and eat us. They want to hunt us down and eat us. Who is they? The <laughs> No, let the him effects. Huh? The effects. The oh, effects. the effects want to hunt us down and eat us. That is good. He's anthropomorphizing. Yeah. <laughs> Could I explain to you something really quick? Because Walter is one of the few people who really get McLuhan. He says, they want to hunt us down and eat us. And I says, who are they? And he says, the effects. Well, that indeed is what's called the android meme. And what the android meme is, is the fact that we start to imitate the hidden effects of the things that we invent. A good example, even though it is puny, is people keep their cell phone on vibrate in their pocket all day. So they walk around and then they get home at night and they take their cell phone out of their pocket and put it on their bedside stand and get in bed and they feel phantom vibrations on their leg. That is the human imitating a hidden effect of something we invent. Well, that's not that cheesy because when us old fucks grew up, we would hear phantom phone rings in a room when we were in it. We'd go, someone must be wanting to get a hold of me. I thought I heard the phone ring. So it's the same thing now people do with their cell phone. Someone must be wanting to get a hold of me. So the, the phantom vibration on their leg. And Walter got it. He would just specified what the Android meme is. And he said the cure to it earlier today was total field efficiency that we can through comprehensive awareness studying pattern recognition uncover the hidden effects of the things we invent and roam the cosmos as Marsha would say in the Playboy interview. 
Why do we ignore the hidden effects of things we invent, Craig? To make more money, don't you? To make more money, capitalism. <laughs>